everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. The dawn of the 2022 baseball card collecting season is upon us. 2022 Top Series 1 is about to drop. The checklist has dropped. And the question on every collector's mind is, is this set a blockbuster or is it a little bit lackluster? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that is with the One Cent Sports Cards Set Guide and Review. So I'm super excited that the 2022 baseball card collecting season is starting. 2022 Top Series 1 is dropping in just a few days. And what we're trying to find out in this set guide and review is how good the set really is. And we're going to do that by using the exclusive one cent sensational set ranking. What is that you ask? Well, let me explain. First, this rating system is the most in-depth rating system you're going to find anywhere on the internet. What I do is I break 2022 Top Series 1 down into 10 different categories. And each one of those categories is worth 1 to 10 points. 1 being a low score, 10 being a high score. We have categories from the auto checklist to the variations to collectability. All sorts of different categories. Then what we do is we take all of the points, we add them all up, and give the set a final sensational set ranking score using the scale that you see below then what we do is we compare the 2022 set with the past scores that it's got in 2021 and 2020 and then we'll compare 2022 top series one to all of the other sets that have been released so far in the young card collecting season and for 2022 we have a bunch of new updates to the sensational set rating system. First, we have a brand new category. It is called collectability. That category replaces the inserts and relics category. Collectability, what does that mean? Well, how collectible is the set? How desirable is it? How do people respond to it in the marketplace? Then we also have inserts and relics wrapping up into the variations and parallels category. So now we just have one category for variations and parallels, inserts and relics. We've also replaced the old star rating system with the new scale system that you see below. So a set is either ranked poor, average, very good, or sensational based upon the score it gets in the ranking system. So no more one to five stars, we're using the scale system that you see below. And I'm very excited about this. We have a new break team target cheat sheet that I will be sharing later on that allows you to easily know what teams you should be buying into breaks and what teams you should be avoiding. We basically rank all of the 30 teams to tell you which teams you should be buying. So stay tuned for that. So before we begin, I got one more thing. Be sure to throw over to first and hit that like button for me. It is the best way you can support the channel. And if you like these set guides and reviews, hit subscribe so you can see every one of them. If you want to see them first, be sure to hit the bell notification so you can get the review as soon as it drops. And if you enjoy the channel's content, you'll enjoy my Patreon page even more. Over there, you can get first access to every break I do. You can get break credits. You can get monthly perk packs access to my Discord community, and so much more. There's a link in the description below if you want to check that out, and I encourage you to do so. So here we go, 2022 Top Series 1. Here's what we're covering off on today. First, we're going to cover off on the set highlights, kind of that 10,000-foot view of what this set has to offer. Dig a little bit deeper, go into the different buying formats that you can get Series 1 in. Go even farther in, we'll take a look at the key cards, the key rookies, the key uh, parallels that we're chasing, and we'll cover off on all the different parallels, inserts, relics, and autos that you can get in the set. Then we're going to get to the fun part. We'll get to the break team targets, six teams that I personally think will be valuable teams for you to buy into a break. And 
I'll follow that up with a break cheat sheet that will tell you where I think all 30 teams rank in regards to should you be buying them or should you be avoiding them. So be sure to look out for that. And that will all bring us to our one cent sensational set ranking where we find out how good 2022 Top Series 1 really is. And of course, as we always do, we will end by showing you all of the 2022 set rankings to date so you can see how good Top Series 1 ranks with all of the other sets that have come out for, so far. Here's a hint. It's ranked one of one. This is the first review. So let's dig in. The set highlights. First thing to know about Top Series 1, it is the set that kicks off the 2022 card season. It is their flagship set that is the first of three series in the flagship set. You got Series 1, Series 2, and Update Series. Series 1 has 330 cards in the base set for its checklist, and it's in its 71st year of production. Started way back in 1951 and hasn't stopped since. This year we have a 16 color base set checklist parallel rainbow and you may find that there are some retail specific parallels that expand that rainbow. Think your Walgreens yellows and stuff like that. You're going to find this everywhere. Widely available in hobby formats and retail formats. I don't think you'll have a problem finding this on shelves. There are also eight new insert sets that have been introduced for 2022. And the 1987 Tops design is used heavily throughout the set. You're going to find it in relics. You're going to find it in inserts. You're going to find it in autos. They're celebrating the 35th anniversary of the iconic Woodback set that was released in 1987. A very cool set. Glad that they're bringing it back. I've been looking forward to this for a couple years. New for this year, there is a very rare Salute to the Mick insert available. It is like an ultra rare insert, and there's only three different cards in that set. Now, there will be nine cards in the set total. Series 2 will have the next three, and Update Series will have the final three. Returning again for 2022, we have the popular silver packs. Those are exclusive to Hobby and Hobby Jumbo only. And... If you buy a jumbo box, you can also get a 1987 Topps Future Stars box loader in that box. The Home Run Challenge cards return again for 2022. Those are always popular. And of course, the image variations will also be available in 2022. So what are the different buying formats we can get this in? Well, first, let's cover off on Hobby. We have a jumbo box. A jumbo box is going to have 10 packs in the box, and there are 46 cards per pack. So that gets you 460 total cards. Cost on that right now, averaging around 215 bucks. Your cost per card on that, 47 cents. What it's guaranteed to get you is one auto, two relics, two silver packs, five gold foil parallels that are exclusive to the jumbo format specifically and you do get that 1987 tops future stars box loader you can also get a hobby box a hobby box is going to have 24 packs per box 14 cards per pack 336 total cards price on that right now around 135 bucks so your cost per card around 40 cents you were guaranteed to get one auto or relic not and relic but or relic and you also get a silver pack you are also guaranteed to get two rainbow foil parallels. For retail, you can get a retail box, 24 packs per box, 16 cards per pack, 384 total cards, and the cost on that is around 90 bucks. Your cost per card comes all the way down to 23 cents, but you are not guaranteed an auto or a relic. What you will get is 24 stars of MLB cards, and those are exclusive to the retail format. You can always get a blaster box. There's going to be seven packs in that box, 14 cards per pack. So 98 total cards there cost you 20 bucks, cost per card about 20 cents. And you do get a relic. It is the player number jersey medallion relic card. There's 25 cards in that set. You can also get a hanger box. I like the hanger boxes. There's 67 cards in the box. And the price on those is around $11. Your cost per card comes all the way down to 16 cents and you are guaranteed to get four retail exclusive inserts. Typically the odds in hanger boxes are some of the best odds for pulls. 
that you're going to find out of any of the different formats. And you also have a low cost per card. So definitely don't pass on hanger boxes. You can also get a fat pack. There's going to be 36 cards in a fat pack. Costs you around 6 bucks. So your cost per card is $0.17. Cents and you're guaranteed to get two retail exclusive inserts. The tens should also be returning. However, there's not a lot of information available on those yet. But the tens typically have 75 cards in them. Cost 15 bucks. So your cost per card is around 20 cents. And there are 10 exclusive inserts that you will get in the 10. Typically, those end up being like a chrome variation of one of the retail inserts that you typically see. And don't be surprised if you find individual gravity feed packs available in different formats available based upon where you're shopping. So what are the key cards that we're going to be chasing in 2022 Top Series 1? Well, let's cover off on the key rookies first. We have Gavin Sheets, Emmanuel Rivera, Brian De La Cruz, Vidal Brujan, Connor Wong, Tyler Gilbert, Jaron Duran, Reed Detmers, Wander Franco, the one that everyone is chasing and the one that is creating so much hype around this set, Brandon Marsh, Jackson Cower, Jake Myers. And rounding out the key rookies, we've got Matt Veerling. But we also have our parallels, autos, inserts, relics, stuff like that. Obviously, one of the biggest inserts is going to be the 1987 Topps baseball insert, heavily featured throughout the set. And our ultra rare salute to Mick insert, that's going to be highly desirable, very much like the Kaboom stuff that you find in Panini. I think it's going to be a great ultra rare chase that you find in Series 1. The Silver Pack Mojo Refractors, always popular, always fun to collect, as well as the short print image variation cards that you'll find in Series 1. We have the In the Name Relics, which is a very cool relic. They're all one of ones. Basically, they take one letter out of the last name off a jersey of a player and make it a one of one patch. They're very good looking cards. And one of my personal favorite relics out of all the relics that get introduced out of any set is the Topps Reverence Autograph Patches. Very beautiful cards. Very nice hits. Again, very collectible. Also a tough pull but definitely a chase card in series one. We have the welcome to the show autos, a very nice auto checklist there with some past grades and some good young stars in that checklist. And we have the world series champions autos and auto relics, obviously going to be all Braves cards there. Cut signatures are available, very hard to pull, very long odds but a fantastic cut signature auto checklist. And some of those cards can be worth a fortune. We also have the 1987 Future Stars box loaders. Some of those can be autoed. Those are only available in the jumbo format. A very fun box loader. So what are our base parallels? Let's cover off on them. Like I said, we have the 16 color rainbow. We'll start with the rainbow foil. And that you will find in hobby and in retail. Uh, we have the gold foil, which is in one of two packs, but only available in jumbo packs. You have the royal blue, which is in one of 10 packs. You can see what that looks like over on the right with the Clayton Kershaw card. And then we get to our numbered ones, which will be gold to 2022, the green foil board to 499, orange foil board to 299. Red foil board to 199, the vintage stock to 99, Independence Day to 76. Then we have the black number to 71, exclusive to hobby and jumbo only. Returning again, we've got the Father's Day blue and the Mother's Day hot pink, both numbered to 50. The Memorial Day camos, those are going to be numbered to 25. The clear variations, numbered to 10. Now there are only 100 of those cards, not all 330 cards have a clear variation but 100 do, and each of them are numbered to 10. And then we have our one of ones, the printing plates and the platinum one of one. So what are the different inserts we can get? Well, we've got the six four stars that's covering 10 cards with a small parallel breakdown that you can see on screen. The 1987 Topps Baseball. We're gonna see a ton of these coming out of packs. There's 100 cards in that subset with a decent parallel breakdown and a very cool wood one of one. 
There's the 1987 Topps Baseball Chrome Silver Packs. Those have 100 cards in that set, and the parallels are to be determined. But trust me, you will probably find six or seven different colors on that parallel breakdown. You have 2021 Greatest Hits featuring some of the greatest hits from, that's right, 2021. There are 20 cards in that subset with the parallel breakdown that you see on screen. And we have a die cut for 2022. The Diamond Die Cuts, 20 cards in that subset. For some more inserts, we have the flashiest feet. That's got 15 cards. You can see what that looks like over on the right, highlighting some of the footwear that some of today's superstars wear. Then we have Generation Now, which features a lot of the young and rookie stars that you find in MLB today. 30 cards in that subset. The home run cards are coming back, 30 cards in that set. And our box topper, our box loader, the oversized 1987 Tops Future Stars, there's 25 cards in that subset, and you can only find them in the jumbo format. Then there's that ultra rare salute to Mick, three cards in that subset for Series 1, and sketch cards also return for 2022. Do not know what those cards are going to be, and the artists are not yet released. And wrapping up on our inserts, we have the Stars of MLB. 30 cards in that subset exclusive to the retail format with a small parallel rainbow. We have the stars of MLB Chrome, which are Chrome variations of that, again, available in retail only, and you'll find them in one of 10 retail packs. We have the welcome to the show insert. That's got past and present stars in their rookie seasons, 50 cards in that subset with a parallel rainbow. And then we get to our relics. For our relics, we have the 1987 Topps Baseball Relic. You can see what that looks like with Mike Trout over to the right. There's 59 cards in that set with a parallel rainbow breakdown that you see on screen. We have the In the Name Relics. Again, very cool pull, very long odds on pulling it, but if you can get one, they're awesome. They are available in Hobby and Jumbo only, and there are 36 cards in that subset. Then we have Major League Material. You're going to find these are one of the more common relics that you pull out of boxes. 57 cards in that subset with the parallel rainbow that you see on screen. And then we have the Postseason Performance Relics. 30 cards in that subset, each numbered to 99 or less with a small parallel rainbow. Then we have the World Series Champion Relics. Going to feature all Atlanta Braves. 8 cards in that set, each numbered to 99 or less. And then we have manufactured relics. First one we have the city flag patch card featuring each city that is in Major League Baseball. 30 cards in that subset, only available in Hobby and Jumbo with a nice little parallel rainbow. We also have the commemorative MLB logo medallion, 30 cards in that subset, and the player number jersey medallions, 25 cards in that set and they're only available in Retail Blasters. They have not announced what the parallels are going to be on that yet. Then we get to our autographs. For our autographs, we've got a 1987 Topps Baseball Autographs. We're probably going to find plenty of these as we're opening up packs. 87 card autograph checklist and a nice parallel rainbow. And then we also have the 1987 Topps Baseball Chrome Silver Pack autographs, very collectible there. The parallels are to be determined, but plenty of those are going to be coming out of packs. There's 76 cards in that checklist. We also have the 2021 Greatest Hits autographs. They're each numbered to 10 or less, 20 cards in that subset. And another more common autograph that we're going to find coming out of packs, the Baseball Stars autographs, a staple of the flagship set, 88 cards in that subset with a parallel rainbow that you see on screen. Then we have the Baseball Stars dual autographs, much harder to pull. There's 24 cards in the checklist, each number to five or less, and you can see what those look like over to the right with Derek Jeter and Aaron Judge. Then extremely hard pulls, the cut signatures. They're all one of ones, an amazing checklist again for flagship but there are 50 different cut signatures that you will find in packs. If you find one, it is an awesome pull. Congrats to you, but definitely some huge, huge names that you can get from the cut signatures. We also have the diamond great die cut autographs, each number to 10 or less, 17 cards in the checklist. We have more autographs. 
We have the flashiest feet. That comes in an autographed version. Each number to 10 or less, 13 cards in the checklist. And Generation Now also comes in an autographed version. 24 cards in that checklist, each number to 10 or less. You can see what that looks like over on the right. The box toppers, the box loaders, the oversized 1987 Tops Future Stars. You can get an autographed version of that. Only 15 cards in the autograph checklist, and they as well are numbered to 10 or less. Then we have postseason performance autographs, numbered to 50 or less, 17 cards in the checklist. Welcome to the show autographs, 32 cards, each numbered to 10 or less. And the World Series champion autographs, numbered to 50 or less, only six cards in the set with a small parallel rainbow. Finally, we get to our autographed relics. We have the City Flag Patch autographs, each with 26 cards in that set, and they're only available in hobby and jumbo format. There's the commemorative MLB logo medallion autographs, numbered to 10 or less. You will only find those in hobby and jumbo. And finally, the player jersey number medallions, those are the ones that you find in the retail blasters, 15 cards in that checklist. We also have the postseason performance relics autos, 17 cards in that checklist, each number to 50 or less, and the beautiful Topps Reverence autograph patch, 50 cards in that set. You only find them in Hobby and Jumbo, and you can find very nice red and platinum parallels numbered to five and one of one. Finally, we have the World Series Champion Relic Autos, six cards numbered to 50 or less with a small parallel rainbow. So, with all that being said, we know everything that Top Series 1 has to offer now, and now it's time to buy into a break. But who should we be targeting? Well, I'm going to give you six of my personal teams that I think I would target if I was getting into breaks, and then we'll give you the cheat sheet that will give you all 30 of the teams. So stay tuned for that. But before we do that, I'm going to tell you what I think the best team is, and I think this is a universal opinion. Uh, it will be the Tampa Bay Rays. I think they're going to hold the most value long term because they have one guy by the name of Wander Franco, who a lot of people think is a generational talent. He lit the league on fire when he was called up last year. The team overall does have 14 base cards in the base set checklist, two rookie cards, 32 autos, 11 relics, and 20 inserts. So going to be the most valuable team. I believe it's the best team, and I don't believe it's even all that close. However, there's plenty of other teams, and if you're looking for a lot of autos, look at the Atlanta Braves. They've got 16 base cards, one rookie card, 50 different autos that you can pull out of the set, 24 different relics, and 33 inserts. Now, a lot of that is being padded by the fact that there is the championship relics and autos. However, the Atlanta Braves did win the championship. They have plenty of good players on their team. Plenty of nice autos. A very nice a team if you can get them, the Atlanta Braves. If you're looking for the most rookie cards, look at the Washington Nationals because they have the most rookie cards. They've got 10 base cards in the set and four of them are rookie cards. They do have 16 autos, 6 relics, and 18 inserts. However, none of the four rookies are going to be hyped rookies. They're not going to hold a lot of value out of the blocks, but I am a big believer in rookies do miss, but for every rookie that misses, you kind of get one that hits as well. And so if you kind of go by laws of averages, chasing the most rookies is not a bad strategy in breaks. So the Washington Nationals probably going to be a fairly cheap team and a pick your team. If you get them in a random team, it's probably not a bad team to hold on to. Maybe not a lot of value out of the blocks, but you're chasing rookies. So be on the lookout for the Washington Nationals. If you just want a solid choice, that's going to be the New York Yankees. New York Yankees, always a solid choice, especially in the flagship sets. In this particular set, they've got 19 base cards, two rookie cards, 40 different autos, 19 relics, and 39 inserts. Now, one thing to note here. They also have seven cut signatures. I understand they're very long poles, but you never know when one's going to come out of a pack. And if you get one of those cut signatures, they are awesome. They also have some very nice autos that aren't cut signatures. Some of the past Yankee greats, Derek Jeter comes to mind, and a lot of the current 
Yankee greats that are on the team. So the New York Yankees going to be one of the more expensive teams. They always are, but they are a very solid choice. If you're looking for a sleeper, I've got two of them for you. My first one going to be the St. Louis Cardinals. They've only got 11 base cards and they've only got one rookie card, but they do have 29 autos, 10 relics, and 20 inserts. They also have seven of those cut signature cards, just like the Yankees. And when you look at the auto lineup, they have some fantastic Cardinals from the past. They have fantastic young Cardinals of today, like Dylan Carlson's got autos in there. Basically up and down, it is a very strong team auto checklist for the St. Louis Cardinals. I believe in a pick your team break, they're going to kind of hover maybe right around number 10. They might even fall out of the top 10 in regards to most expensive teams in a Random team break. If you hit them, I would hold them. If you can make a trade for them, I think you're doing pretty good because you've got a decent shot at autos. And if you get one of them, they're going to be pretty nice. Overall, I think it's a nice value team that you can get in Series 1. There's also the Philadelphia Phillies is my other sleeper. Now, they've got 15 base cards, 2 rookie cards, 23 autos, 11 relics, and 16 inserts. Now, the 2 rookies, you can look their names up. They both had decent seasons last season when they were called up and they are primed to kind of keep rolling in 2022. And just like the Cardinals, when you look at their auto lineup, they've got a nice mix of new and old. You've got like Mike Schmidt autos in there. You've got Bryce Harper autos in there. You've got Alec Bohm autos in there. So a very nice auto checklist that you're going to get from the Phillies. They've got a couple rookies that could reach higher levels in their potential. So the Phillies is going to be another nice sleeper. Again, I think they'll be somewhere. They'll probably still be in the top 15, but maybe right in the middle of the pack there. And if you can get them cheap on a pick your team, I think it's a fine team to get. And if you get them in a random team break, you're doing fine. I would hold them. Maybe not quite the amount of autos that some of the other teams have, but you've still got a decent chance there with 23 autos. So don't look past the Phillies either. But if you don't got time to go look at all of the team sets and all of the different checklists that you can look at to figure out exactly who it is you should and shouldn't be buying, well, I've made a break cheat sheet for you. Here's how this is going to work. We're going to tier all of the teams out into three tiers. We've got the top tier, the second tier, and the third tier. Now, our top tier is going to be your premier teams that you're looking for. They're probably going to be the most expensive teams, very sought after teams, and there's good reasons for that. They've got very good team set checklists. Then we've got that middle of the tier. You're not doing bad with any of these teams, but you may miss here and there. There's some value in every one of the teams in this tier, but maybe not quite at the level that the top tiers are. Maybe a few less autos, a few less key rookies, stuff like that. And then we've got tier three, which are kind of the teams that in reality you probably want to avoid. If you hit them in a random team break, if you can pull a trade off, that's fantastic. But the reality is tier three are probably the teams you want to avoid and break. So let's start with the top tier. We've got the Tampa Bay Rays the Braves, the Red Sox, the White Sox, the Angels, and the Yankees. Any one of these teams is going to be doing good. Great auto checklist, some key rookies in them, just the sheer volume of cards that you will get. You're going to be doing fine with any one of these teams. If you get them in a random team break, you've done a great job. You're probably going to end up having a decent break. If you want to pony up and pay what I think will be a premium price for some of these teams, especially Tampa Bay, I think you'll probably be doing okay. Just try and look for some value where you can. If any of these teams fall out of the top six, you're probably getting some pretty good value. For our middle tier teams, we've got quite a few of them. We've got like the Orioles. We've got the Marlins. The Cardinals are in this. And then you've got the Phillies in here. So uh, both of my sleepers are kind of in this second tier. The Seattle Mariners, I think, hold a lot of value. The Dodgers, a very good checklist. Uh, the Padres also have a very good auto checklist. The, the Reds, a couple nice rookies in there. But any one of these teams, you're doing okay. You're maybe not top tier. If you can get them cheap in a, in a pick your team on like an eBay auction or something like that, you probably are going to do okay. Some of these teams are going to miss some of the times because they don't have quite the amount of autos that the top tier teams or quite the amount of relics. 
not the same amount of hits. They maybe don't have the same card quantity on their team checklist that some of these other ones do. But overall, I think any of these teams that you see on screen right now, there's value in every one of them. And if you bought into any one of them, I don't think anyone would question why you did that. For our bottom tier, we have nine teams. These are the teams that I would say I would steer clear of them because there's just not a lot of value. We have the Guardians. I believe that maybe the two worst teams would be the Rangers. The Rangers have very little to offer in 2021 Series 1. And Kansas City and the Guardians, maybe not much more. The Rockies are not offering much. A little surprised that the Cubs are down here. I think you're going to see the Cubs rise pretty quickly in Series 2. But for Series 1, even with the youth movement, we're not seeing a lot of action on the Cubs. So these are the teams that I would steer away from if you can. If you hit them in a random team break, I try and trade out of the spot. I know sometimes that's hard to do. But what I would like to see is a little bit more card quantity in these lower tier teams because we just have a nine of them in there. I would like it if there was only six and we could move some more up to the second tier, but can't do that. But you can use this break cheat sheet to quickly know what are the teams and where are they kind of valued generally in regards to like pick your teams and stuff like that. So I hope as you guys are getting into breaks, I hope you have good luck. I hope that this sheet helps you. Comment below and let me know what other information on the cheat sheet you would like to see. And I will try and incorporate that into future versions of these set guides and reviews moving forward in the 2022 card collecting season. So be sure to comment below there. So with all that being said, that brings us to our one cent sensational set ranking. Now, again, we use the set rating scale that you see at the top of your screen. And what we do is we break everything down into 10 categories and each category is worth 10 points. So our first category is appeal. How appealing is the set to collectors in the hobby? Well, series one, I'm going to give it a nine. It is one of the most appealing sets. People get excited for it every year. Set collectors like it. Rookie card collectors like it. Team collectors like it. Investors like it. Very few people don't like Series 1. So I go ahead and give it a 9. For our base set checklist, this year I'm giving it a 6. 6 is a little low, but the reality is, is it's, it is missing a few um, rookies that could have been in there. O'Neill Cruz being a major omission. We've also got some of the filler cards that comes along with the 330 card set. So you've got like team cards and the combo cards and some of these cards, you know, they, they end up going in the common pile. And that's what happens when you have a 330 card base set checklist. But we've got a few nice rookies in here. But the reality is, is unlike the last couple years, we don't have like four or five top rookies that people are saying, hey, we got to have this card. We have one generational rookie at the top wander franco but once we get past that level we drop down pretty quickly on the rookie card class so we're going to give it a six for our auto checklist if you look at some of the autos you can pull out of here fantastic autos the flagship set although the odds are long and we'll get into that in a minute some of the autos that you can get out of this set are fantastic the auto checklist is very nice there is filler but not a ton of it so I go ahead and give it a 7.5. For our inserts, relics, parallels, variations, I'm going to give it a 7. We have some new inserts, which are kind of fun, like the feet insert, the shoe inserts, awesome. And then we have some kind of tried and true ones that we've done. The generation now is nice. The parallels, always very nice in the flagship set. Just hope that the card quality and the cut is better than it was last year. The SP image variations, always fun, always strongest in the flagship set so i go ahead and give it a seven for our production run and pack odds series one is produced more than any other top set this has the biggest print run i don't know that it has the biggest print run in the hobby not sure what panini is doing but it is very large which makes your pack odds really long so I have to give it a two, which is pretty low, but it's justified. This stuff is going to be available everywhere, and they're going to print a ton of it. For our card quality, I'm going to go ahead and give it a five. The paper stock that they use for Series 1 is fine, but there are quality control issues that continue to plague, and it's been happening for about, eh, well, it's always happened, but it seems to have gotten worse in the last year or two years. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a five until the 
quality assurance goes up. For the historical value of this set, historically, Series 1 in the flagship series in general holds nice value on the secondary market. Some of the cards that will come out of here are going to be worth a lot of money. So I go ahead and give that a 7. For our cost value, which means the value that you're getting per box, like how much value returns based upon the investment you put in, I'm going to give that score a 5. And here's why. It still seems like a really high cost per auto in this set. The only guaranteed auto that you can buy in any format is in that jumbo. And the jumbo is above 200 bucks right now. So if we just say it's a $200 cost per guaranteed auto to get one, and then some of those might not be worth 200, that's where that cost value really starts coming down. Now, some of the parallels and some of the other cards over time, they will increase in value. But for the most part, I just believe that they've got to figure out a way to get a guaranteed auto into that hobby box you can buy different sets that have just as many cards think panini don russ panini don russ is going to give you like two times the amount of relics and two times the amount of autos for less than the cost of a hobby box so that's where i go cost value on this cannot go above a five now the value of the cards long term could be worth a lot so you got to up the score there we'll keep it at five Artistic value, haven't talked too much about that in the set review so far, but we have a very clean card design, which is vastly improved over 2021. And so for that alone, I am going to give it a 7.5. They also have some very fun inserts with some cool designs on it. And some of the relics and patches that come out of here are some of my favorite that come out of any set. So I go ahead and give it a 7.5. And for our brand new category, collectability. Well, collectability means how desirable is it to the hobby? I go ahead and give it a nine. I don't think there's many sets that are as collectible as series one. Set collectors love collecting this set. Team collectors love collecting this set. The secondary market will be very active with this set and people at card shows and everywhere else. Top series one holds its own. The flagship set always holds its own. It's had a little bit of its edge taken off because of some of the chromium stock and some of the premium sets that have been that get released throughout the year so it's not quite a 10 but series one people love it the hobby loves it it's it's the nostalgia that comes along with it so a very collectible set for new collectors old collectors novice collectors and advanced collectors alike so i go ahead and give it a nine so what we're going to do we're going to add all these points up and using our sensational set rating scale we'll find out how good 2022 Top Series 1 really is. Its ranking for 2022 comes in at 65. A very good set, ranking on the lower end of very good. I believe that it has a lot to offer for a lot of people. I also believe that it has a lot to offer in regards to production runs and stuff like that, which I think kind of hurts its value a little bit. The fact that we have Wander Franco in here is driving a lot of the hype. And if he ends up being the player that he will be, I see people breaking this set for decades to come in search of that Wander Franco card. He is not the only rookie in the set. There's other ones that could go on to be very valuable as well. Jaron Duran comes to mind. The print quality, we'll see where that kind of lands. I'm not real confident in it. And the pack odds to me are going to be pretty long again. And I just wish we could get a guaranteed auto at a lower cost per auto rate somehow in the flagship sets. But you can get in cheap on the retail side and it's a very fun set to collect. So I go ahead and say it's a very good set. We give it a score of 65. But how did it score in 2021? Well, in 2021, Top Series 1 ranked considerably better it was a 70.5 on the one cent sensational set rating system it scored a little bit better because a lot of the rookies that were in there even though a lot of them didn't hit in 2021 you have to remember that they were coming out of a pandemic season and did not play a lot i think a lot of those rookies are going to mature a lot and they're really going to hit 
the market hard this year. And I think you're going to see that set really kind of mature. I think that 70.5 rating is a pretty accurate rating based upon what I think some of these rookies will actually do now that they have a full season of playing time under their belt after the pandemic. In 2020, Top Series 1 ranked all the way at 68.5. Now, that had some very nice rookies in it as well. Jordan Alvarez was a name that comes to mind. So as we can see, Top Series 1 2022 pulls back a little bit. A lot of that because of production run and a lot of that because we don't have a plethora of rookies that we're chasing. We only have just a couple. But overall, like I said, 2022 Top Series 1, if you like baseball cards, it's really hard not to like the flagship set. With that being said, where does 2022 Top Series 1 rank overall well no surprise here it ranks one of one right now because it is the first set that we have reviewed it does have a score of 65 which gives it a very good score i believe that it will hover around the top 10 probably until mid-season maybe even a little bit farther depending on some of the rookies that come out in series two but overall guys I think it's going to be a fun set to open. I think we'll see some people complaining about pack odds and production run. And I think you'll see a lot of people chasing Wander Franco and living up around that hype. And if Wander starts the season fast, watch out because this could be a very collectible set very fast. So let me know in the comments below what you think about Series 1. Let me know if you're buying into it. If you don't like it, would love to hear your thoughts. I respond to a ton of the comments that people put in my videos. And as you're out there in the wild, I hope that you are able to find Series 1, and I hope that when you do, that you have good luck on your pack polls. And until the next review, be good to your family, be good to your friends, be good to your neighbors, and take care. Thanks for watching.